Okay. To start with, we, 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 we all know, with, I mean, with this premise, we all know about the first generation conventional extension, right? Training and visit extension model. And specifically, if we are talking about like in a country like India, where we have an extension agent to farmer ratio of one is to thousand with, 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 with the staggering 200,000 extension workers responsible for serving 141 million hectares of farmland. So the challenge is here is very evident. It is slow, costly, and exclusive approach with an average cost of $35 per farmer per practice. So we, what do we need? We need a more efficient and inclusive solution. So how can we do that? Like with, 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 a, with a very low cost and like with more effectiveness and an inclusive uh, approach, what is that we can do? Yeah. So that is where... Uh, sorry. So that's where Digital Green um, entered into the picture way back in 2007, emerging out as um, of the Microsoft and come up with this pretty smart digital solutions. We call it as a video-based extension, producing farmer-friendly videos uh, to, make a, to make it more um, access to the public extension services. A whole lot better after more than a decade of experience and knowledge of our, our parsleys. We got our 7,000 of these videos. They're not just in one language. They're in 40 different languages. And, and we already shared this with, with, with over like more than 5.2 million um, farmers all across the world, including India, Africa, and within Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya. And and we managed to cut our um, cost per uh, per adoption from like thirty five dollars to three point five dollars per practice and boosted farmer income by twenty four percent compared to the the first generation model. And and then what next? So, but it it didn't stop there. So exploring about how can we make a difference. So introduced data exchange protocol called FarmStack, getting the registries, farmer registries and science-based data like soil, weather data together, market link, market, market information. So resulting in more like, you know, per advisories without compromising on the data privacy and the consent issues, this led to the higher acceptance and the adoption over generic recommendations. So our, our what 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 we meant to say is our core ethos has always been put um, under underserved farmers first elevating their voices and increasing their agency using technology so as the technology evolved so we and then what's now what's now <laughs> so now we, we we create a dynamic and localized conversational interface in local language conversational interface in the local language um, where where um, create more dynamic and localized um, content, localized advisories in the local languages, which is accessible via generative chatbot. So we are using Telegram as a channel. We started with WhatsApp, but considering all other features, what we have in Telegram and the cost effectiveness, we switched to Telegram. And then currently it is, it is it's Telegram as a channel where we are uh, passing on this um, bot to the um, to the extension agents to the lead farmers through and then but going forward in the roadmap we have a plan to switch to the mobile app considering all the other features like off nail functionality and many other things as we we also discussed this um, before this presentation about this offline feature and then that's where even we wanted to move from telegram to the the mobile um, mobile based app uh, to accommodate many more features which are more um, user friendly so so we streamline extension agent tasks by integrating essential data capture process into our chatbot. Our goal remains clear, empower and support extension agents and farmers through automation and inclusive, inclusiveness, have a more tailored conversational design. So we are shifting the communication paradigm, guiding the users to the relevant videos based on their unique needs and interests. So as I said before in the previous slide, like we had this 7,000 plus um, localized videos, specifically in the countries where we already like had this treasure, we've been using those and, and kind of getting all those content into this bot and then also linking it to the, the, the entire conversation, what happens over, mm -hmm. um, and then also like um, uh, customizing these, um, um, these, seven eight minute videos to the short videos which is much more like you know easy to access on 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 the apps like telegram um so and and the strategic shift here ensures our solutions are accessible and highly relevant to the diverse audience so 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 now let us get on a bit on the the architecture so let's take a little closer look behind the scenes at our tech stack so those blue squares represent a treasure of 
of agriculture content. Think of it as a mix of smooth and chinky data. So our videos are the real stars here. They go beyond delivering information. They forge connections and build trust because these videos are not again like someone and like when you know, made by an expert. These are again the videos made from by the community itself. Farmers are featured in that talking about their own experience. So, um, so and it's not just about the videos. We have got a variety of resources, including the fact sheets and other other resources uh, from our uh, from our partners from from the government partners with whom we work across um, uh, across the countries across the geographies. Where we are. And now behind the scenes, data preparation is where the magic happens. It's like it's 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 like the secret sauce. So involving tasks like crunching numbers from the call center logs and sorting through crop fact sheets. So what's essential to know is that all this content is already a part of trusted farmer friendly advisory support. So we are not opening it to the Internet of Things. There is a, there is a knowledge base which is verified and be like verified by an experts and shared and then made available. And whenever there is a query from the user. So it, it gets um it pulls up the so it pulls up the responses from this verified knowledge base, not moving out of it. So hence trying to control all that hallucination what happens. So but um, we are we are not um stopping at the basics. We are breaking down the barriers and ensuring inclusivity with a particular focus on women roles and challenges. And here is the exciting part. So we are tapping into new data resources like weather and market data. It's like having more insights that can revolutionize how we can support farmers and make and help them in making some informed decisions. So there you have it, uh, a sneak peek of the tech tech thing, what we are uh, use, using as a part of this entire uh, uh, process. So it's not just about the data, it's making a real impact in the world of um, agriculture. And uh, yeah, and we are using some advanced tools like GPT 3.5, 4, and also testing out the Llama 2. So now what's happening with these models? It's it's all about the uh, the RAG, the retrieval augmented generation, thinking of it as like giving our models a backstage pass to the specialized knowledge. So, and we also have a human in loop system here wherein um, the set of, um, there's a team um, who also verifies whether whatever the response is being pulled up from this verified knowledge base or not. Or is it like, is it is it pulling it is, is something happening over there so so we also taking taking care of that part and and again internally we're also get um, validating these responses doing the prompt analysis and uh, analysis within the team and seeing whether the responses are like um, generated or accurate or relevant um, to the to the question asked by the users so in a nutshell, uh, our language models with more knowledge in the context um, so that it can make them even much more like smarter. Um, and, 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 and then the last part of it is um, uh, how, how can interact with our advanced language models. So we have streamlined the process through our user interface. So you have multiple options such as Telegram. And as I said, like initially we also started using WhatsApp and, our, and, and, and we'll, we'll be coming up our own proprietary um, mobile app. So, but as no, uh, Telegram notably has a significant uh, impact uh, in countries like we have seen the use, there's a very good usage in, in uh, India and in, even in Kenya. So, so additionally, we also exploring the other um, channels like SMS, uh, IVR, partnering with um, with agencies like Gramvani, Karya and building up these language models. And then I, uh, I mean, for us, it would be like, you know, super helpful if, if anyone uh, in this space who are working on these language models, who have like, access to these base models, it would be super helpful to collaborate and, and build upon that. Um, so so furthermore, um, uh, like we, we place significant emphasis on ensuring personalized inter interactions, especially concerning the representation of, what, as I said, like women, women voices. We strive to customize responses, providing more a tailored experience rather than relying on very default kind of interactions. And there's and there's also, as you see here, there's also like a feedback mechanism, which again gets back into the system. So our chatbot basically excels at extracting the pertinent information from documents and the videos. So each and every screen of the video, the content in each and every frame of the video is also captured and then transcribed and then translated and then given back to the user. So while the while the history of the interactions contributes to developing more dynamic profiles for the extension agents, so this deeper understanding also allowed us to efficiently address some user specific needs. What is that like? Like one one example, what I could quote here is um, so while there was a response, which is which is, as a user, I'm not so happy, but somewhere I'm looking. 
very close to that, but not able to articulate. So then what we tried was um, um, helping uh, helping the user to think of like what could be the possible follow-up questions. So giving them as an options, like one, two, three. Okay, one follow-up question, one, two, three, so that the user could relate. Okay, this is what I'm looking. And then making a facilitation a little more easier for the user. So, so these are again, as I said, all these, all these experiences and then the deeper understanding is helping us to allow um, to efficiently address the user specific needs. And and uh, so lack of information uh, in, the, in the initial testing period, approximately 60% of the queries posted to the bot remain unanswered. So this, this limitation primarily stems from the availability of the content and how the AI model is calibrated. So some queries may not align well with the capabilities of the bot, which is to be expected. So however, there's a valuable feedback mechanism in place through extension agents. So we have this both thumbs up and thumbs down, and there is also a feedback form which is made available within the bot. So where users can, you know, I mean, just click on that and then share the feedback. But I, I don't, I mean, like, uh, I should say that we don't have, like, we could see that there's much of uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, a lot of uh, users are uh, giving that type of feedback, but giving a little more uh, detailed feedback is, is still not happening much. We are, we are trying to see uh, how that um, happens as we move forward. Uh, and in turn, we also wanted to make it more like a kind of an agentic style wherein ask the questions are asked the feedback as a part of the conversation rather than making it a very exclusive attempt of like you know asking for a feedback right so that that's that's little um and not so kind of a um accepted behavior for any users most of the users will be like okay fine <laughs> as far as i don't have any very specific or kind of compelling need i, I would rather like just just avoid that so, uh, so to enhance bot performance, we we uh, we employed the agricultural reasoning. This involves collecting Q and A pairs. What so what we also tried, we 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 made this a standard like two hundred golden question and answer pairs, including both simple and more complex questions, uh, each with the correct answers. These pa these pairs serves as a benchmarks to evaluate the system's comprehensiveness, and also its ability to respond effectively to the human queries, especially for the extension agents. So we refer to this collection as a golden set of pairs. The model is fine-tuned using Q&A documents, aligning its response with the golden questions and teaching it to predict the accurate answers. So um, moving on to like our experience, sorry, yeah, our experience from the uh, from, from so far, uh, we could see the like potential. Okay. So these are the potential use cases, which which has uh, uh, which has four distinct potential use cases which were emerged. Uh, firstly, it serves as a tool for the FLWs to expand their expand their their own knowledge, often in in a solitary setting. Secondly, it aids in addressing farmers' queries, particularly during one to one interactions. Um, thirdly, it plays a crucial role in facilitating Q and A sessions during group meetings. Lastly, it's being used to train and introduce farmers as a direct users of the bot. Notably, the last point signifies a significant shift where individual farmers are now using the bot introduced to it by FLWs, by, by, by the frontline workers. This reflects a high level of confidence the extension agents have in the bot and the early adoption by the select group of farmers. So these farmers are poised to become the advocates for the bot's utility among their own fellow farmers and community. However, it's essential to recognize that technology alone cannot serve every problem. We, we all know that. So whether it's an improved seed variety or a digital tools, technology primary amplifies the human intent and the capability. So for digital technology to truly enhance the cost effectiveness and the impact of agricultural development, it requires foundational investments in physical infrastructure, finance, political institutions, and and et cetera, et cetera. So our journey towards successful hinges on the partnership with government, NGOs, and private sector agencies. These partners bring domain expertise. Like, like we have this partnership with with the Ministry of Agriculture in um, India, in Kenya, in Ethiopia, and 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 the and these they they as they bring the bring the domain expertise, scalability, and the trust of farmers, which are essential elements in achieving our mission. Yeah, and 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 then when we consider the interaction between the AI and the human, it, it's very crucial to view things from the user perspective. The question arises, what value does this interaction bring and how can the bot continuously improve to ensure users drive the ongoing value? This is where the farmer.chat plays a 
plays an important role as a co-pilot assistance. It not only enhances the user confidence in the motivation, but also delivers the tangible benefits such as significant time savings, reduced effort. It's, it, 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 it's designed to provide an on-demand, bottom-up solutions, aligning closely with what users truly value. So the farmer Dutch chat operates as a collaborative participatory model in contrast to the traditional top-down. So push messaging. Instead of broadcasting very generic messages about fertilizers or the soil preparations, so it fosters a dynamic and interactive relationship catering to the individual needs and preferences. Furthermore, the bot's reasoning capabilities enables it to understand the units and the terms that farmers uh, use uh, and and for their decision making process like and again this differs especially we we faced i'll also get into a little more details of what are the challenges we we faced when it comes to the localization when it comes to the local language so the the, the upcoming slide so I'll, I'll i'll just pause that discussion um, until then okay and then and then uh, if you ask me like what are what are what are the different features what what we have currently are like we have this content library as i said the, the the knowledge base, the verified knowledge base, which has been largely contributed by our partners with whom we partner in the specific geographies. Mm -hmm. And and then the, and there's a feature of like farmer profiles and the uh, registries and their registries and the performance management where where all the tasks which have been assigned to the um, assigned to the the extension workers, lead farmers will be will be kind of facilitated through this app. And this this becomes a kind of a ready reference for them and then making their task a little more easy, especially especially in country like Ethiopia. So where there are like, you know, um, still largely everything has been done on a, the paper based format, the reports are collected and then and then and scanned and then been shared and then again digitized. So so um, in that context, we see a high value, especially for something like a task management and the performance management and then ongoing training, ongoing training through different forms of content, through these short videos on how as an FLW, I can how as a frontline worker as I can like keep up my um, uh, knowledge up to date and then um, browse through the, uh, the the new new things what is what are happening in my domain and then have a, a reports in the dashboards for the management for all the decision making and then marketplace function so these are by and large features what we have um, uh, on our bot of course uh, we are going in a phase wise measure currently we are we are at the um, we are, we are in the like fourth feature wherein we have done with the content library advisories profiles performance and flw and then we we are now uh, targeting the the service layer where well we say service layer it is uh, getting all this um uh, data content uh, more like structured data weather data soil data for the for the better informed decision making so that comes into the picture soon and our service layers and then so where are we now so introducing our Vistar, the national platform in India, a collaborative initiative marked by the partnership with government of India. Our ambitious plan spans for 28 states. So within like five-year time frame, aiming to reach 200,000 frontline workers and, and the impact uh, and impact the lives of approximately 20 million farmers uh, with a focus on the states. Like we started with Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand. And, and these are like quick numbers. Where are we in, in, in India? Where are we in Kenya? With, um, I mean, like the, the 50 crops uh, 50 plus value chains made available on the on the bot and with 5,000 users onboarded and uh, 50,000 messages in India. And then in Kenya, we are like more than, I, I think we are, we are close to 40 value chains with 8,000 users onboarded. And then, and we were just talking about the ones who are onboarded like, through proper like facilitated onboarding and there are some more like users who who like it was where like it's spread and the digital onboarding has also happened and then one thing to note is like approximately like one to um 30 minutes of total time minimum spent by an average user and we are exploring small pilots globally in colombia mongolia morocco and nigeria uh, yeah and localization of our product so at dg we have we've taken these efforts of streamlining and localization of our products so not not just with this even like way back while we started our work with video based extension so it was always there low so localization was always part of our uh, dna and <laughs> the, of, of our entire mission um, so especially with respect to our like you know local language capabilities the bot supports three languages in india hindi telugu and english and we also have some other local dialects like bojpuri and we have seen the performance is much 
I mean, like, of course, it's better in largely spoken languages. But again, when it comes to the very like local uh, languages, which are not spoken widely, so we see there are some challenges, we see that the users are not so happy, the way it's been spoken, though it is like, it is, it is like whatever the local language, but it doesn't sound like that. And it the terms used are different. So we are putting in some other like strategies in place and to make it like a little much more closer than training the um training the bot with more like you know that that human human touch, uh, not like more as a robotic <laughs> types and. Um, yeah, all those efforts are in a way and always like and, and we, we've seen right from the beginning language is is always been our a, a challenge um, uh, on, on the ground. So we are very actively exploring for the for the partners who are who are in the space to collaborate and, and explore these language models and make it as much as, um, uh, you know, more localized um, uh, product, uh, especially for the for the for the regions where where the, it's 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 a very like, key factor to reach out to the larger farming population um and uh, in, in kenya we have like uh, it, it's supporting in english and swahili but we are also exploring something in kikyu um and our our chatbots content is sourced from the local institutions as i said before like in in both english and the local languages so enhancing the contextualization in response to user feedback we have added a language choice option based on the lessons learned during the initial um, trials so the bot offers text, audio, and video features in local languages, enabling users to communicate and receive response in their preferred language. And and then if you if you like yeah coming to the challenges in our journey, we have encountered a set of challenges that we are actively addressing. One such challenge revolves around dealing with the multiple languages. It often involves investigating whether an issue is related to the transcription, translation, content, or even a software bug. So it's like. A very like complex puzzle for us to so so we 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 are on it we the team is investigating and we are doing as i said we have this human in loop system uh, both the both the, the from the tech side from the from the ag domain side um collaboration is again the heart is what what we want to do and willing to do we constantly work closely with experts to iterate and improve our content we are working with karya in India and in Kenya to um, to uh, train the model and and to come up with a um, the better language model for Kikyu and Bhojpuri. So our commitment to improving um, extends to enhancing our AI models, particularly in languages like uh, as I said in um, Bhojpuri and uh, and and Kikyu and Amharic. So we are focused on uh, um, improving the speech recognition, translation, text-to-speech capabilities to provide an even more seamless experience for our users. Despite our progress, we acknowledge that our messaging interface has its limitations to overcome this. We are exploring the options which we would serve as a platform for the efficient profile management, structured data collection, and content iteration. So further evaluating the, basically further elevating our user experience and then, um, yeah, one of the foremost challenges ensuring the precise translations in the local languages, both for voice and text input. This is essential to break the language barriers effectively and ensure seamless communication. So, and we also have seen there are some challenges around uh, um, variations between the telegram phone numbers and the register information. Um, we were we are committed to resolve these these uh, disparities and ensure a smooth and accurate user identification process. So it's also important to recognize that not all the frontline workers with smartphones have internet access. So bridging this, as I said, we will be we are in the process of moving to the mobile app and provide an optional functionality um, as we move forward. Maybe somewhere. Um, three three months from now. So furthermore, our observations have revealed a slow initial interaction with the chatbot, primarily due to the newness of the concept, and and the other um, the recent user insights um, said us that uh, more than an extension agent, the lead farmer it, it's more like apt for a lead farmer, the one who is directly implementing things on ground. Uh, and especially uh, there was also like a question in the previous section. I remember there was a discussion on how do the extension agents see this? Uh, so a very interesting thing, which I also just want to highlight is um, uh, there was like um, there was uh, the, there was this group of, um, uh, you know, we, we had a agency who helped us with some uh, user inside study. So one interesting thing was like the, the extension agents felt that uh the if they use this bot or refer to this something like this in, in in front of a group of farmers in in front of any like 
meetings, uh, they would think that uh, these people are not capable enough to answer themselves and that's where they are referring to these so that was like a very one interesting thing <laughs> so we need to we need to see how it could be strategically strategically addressed um, yeah but otherwise it, it, it's it's really very uh, interesting to see the way user is uh, taking it and, and and especially on the user insight side and we we have a research team who are continuously doing this um, user research and then feeding that into the the product development process Oh, yeah, that's you it. round up, Ashana, so we yeah. have time for Q&A. Yeah, that's it. Back to you. Uh, over to you, Carl. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt, but we need to give room for Q&A. Yeah, 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 sure. sure. I I'm done. I'm done. Good. Thank you very much indeed also for a very interesting presentation. Uh, Ashana, very happy that we... Uh, that that there are several... I'm, I'm sure there are some, but we don't know of uh, who is already out there trying to learn and test how to use artificial intelligence in extension. So this is a debate that we, we within GFRAS will continue to, to uh, put attention to because I think it's very important and it's a very fast moving thing. So something we need to learn about, we need to learn the do's and don'ts as both of the presenters have been talking about. We need to learn the potential and the limitations of this new uh, um, wonder or magic it almost seems like magic to people uh, that you can just press and then it gives you all these answers and of course the quality of answers and and the checking of the validity of the information is very important and there's one question around that uh, asking can non-scientific data so i'm also inviting uh Zai to uh, respond on this can non-scientific data be used here or how do you see it? Also, farmers' information, how do you add that into, into the knowledge pool? So how do you do this sort of quality assurance with non-scientific data and with farmers' information? Thank you. This is the first question. Yeah. Um, so um, there are like two things. The, the, uh, I was also mentioning about the, the, the farmer videos, the community videos. So while we say these are community videos, these are, again, uh, like undergo a process of evaluation of the verification once it's made before it's made available for others to view and consume this content so that's 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 for sure that level of quality check is ensured uh, so hence um, even we are using the any farmer generated videos community videos it is made sure and then when when it comes to the the other set of knowledge base what we are mentioning from where like bot um, pulls up all the responses this is again a kind of a verif verified source of uh, uh, resources what we get from our own partners with whom we like you know who are our like domain main experts so any any kind of any type of like you know resources any type of um, uh, responses which comes in here which have been consumed by the bot and then been taken to the other users is is all verified so there is no scope for any kind of um, uh, unverified uh, though even even source could be like from farmer source could be from 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 the uh, agencies but still it is it's it's verified and then been consumed thank you very much anything from say on this Yes, I think, you know, for us, um, the main challenge here was there is a abundance of research documents from universities and from research institutions and especially from private companies, but that farmers just do not have the time um, or in, in, in some cases the ability to, to read through and, and to process that information. So that was the one area where we try to bridge this gap between university research, highly technical documents, but then there are also people in the field and most of that information came from agricultural extension officers themselves. That are, that are subject matter experts. Um, the recent one me and Andre processed was a whole um, write-up of pomegranates, which one of the extension officers have a real passion for. And we took this written document from him and we ingested it into the AI engine and immediately it went through the information, it scored it, it checked it for bias, it checked it for, for mistakes and it was fed into the system because there could be a direct line of traceability back to the experts. So I do think there's a huge role to play for, for subject matter experts and especially, you know, retired farmers or people who have really spent a lot of time in the field, uh, indigenous knowledge um, that can also be ingested, but also from communities and communities of farmers in certain areas contributing to the network. But it is important that information is, is scored, is qualified, and then, then dispersed into the system. 
Um, Thank you very so much. If, when, uh, if, yes, add, to, if I may add to that, so um, also I think the question relates to the farmer's actual data. So we'll never upload the farmer's data on his um, on his form into the database. However, um, that's why we move from the WhatsApp line and the Telegram line to a mobile app because we we build a profile in the app. So in the app, we know that the farmer stays close to um, to Nairobi. We know that he's already um, asked questions about um, maize and he's got um, cattle on the farm. Um, we look at the weather for that specific um, area. And then what we do is we do our prompt engineering, basically taking the knowledge base, which is the um, um, which, which is the uh, the rest of the um, information, um, combine that with uh, with the farmer specific information to give a localized answer. And I think therein lies the the key to that. Thank you very much. Very elaborate answer. So there was also a question if this can be used in value chains, uh, sort of not only on farm but throughout the value chain. Can you use AI? Uh, I could see that uh, digital green was working with specific value chains, but I don't know if it's only on the production side or if it's sort of if something. So uh, mm -hmm. any response to that from any of you? Yes, I do think we need to integrate. We see that great value is added um, from the farm as, and as farther it goes down the value chain. So we do need to integrate um, the rest of the value chain on the AI. And then we do think there can be a lot of value added, especially from a farmer perspective on how to integrate that more into their operation and to add value. This will always come down to profitability. How do we make farmers more sustainable by adding profit to what they are producing? So so um, that's why, you know, we've really focused on on embracing the rest of the value chain to ensure that they integrate seamlessly with the rest of farmers. Achana, you want to come in here? Yeah. So especially like, you know, from the from the value chain perspective, I also would like to highlight here is unless until I mean, and, you know, initially when we started with very few value chains, um, what we what we have seen is this, this overwhelming kind of an, uh, kind of a response coming back from the user saying that like we 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 want this and this crop this crop so so again not limited to only the 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 production part of it like post production marketing so it's it's always of course uh, good and then we always look forward for for a content partners again the same content sourcing the content is always again a challenge you all know it better right so uh, so we we are trying our best to uh, get all those collaborations like we we collaborated with Kabi uh, we we collaborated with like Kalro in in uh, Kenya and then with Ministry in India uh, so could, to get this more comprehensive uh, in terms of like in you know, a more number of value chains and even within within the value chain like not not just at one stage like across all the stages of the uh, value chain. Thank you. 